Hello everybody, my name is Light of Hand and today I'm starting a new series which I'm not sure I'm going to call just yet either chat with a gamer or talk to a gamer and today I have the privilege of actually having my a friend of mine that I do actually know in real life as well Age of Boredom How are you Age? I'm pretty good, how are you? I'm not too bad mate, it's a bit of a wet dreary day here in London isn't it mate? Yeah, it's it's not the best. I uh, I went to the shop earlier and it wasn't a pleasant experience. I'm going to uh, now pass over to Asia Boredom to let him tell you guys about his channel. And then we'll come back to me and him chatting. Cool. Well, I'm Asia Boredom on YouTube and on Twitter. And I run a Switch Let's Play channel. So I, I play lots of different games on the Nintendo Switch and uh, record them for people's enjoyment. I occasionally do like reviews and that kind of thing, but it's it's mostly kind of like long let's plays. They're about twenty minutes each, and then I'll play a game from start to finish. And then you can kind of watch it as a series, or just like dip it in and out if you fancy it. Oh, cool! Uh, just in case you people didn't know, he did once do a miniature bit as well. If you go <laughs> really back in the videos, then there is a few uh, Dreadball videos, which actually you featured yeah. Them yeah, in uh, one of those. Up. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> so yeah this this is not actually our first collaboration because no it's not we yeah we did that that was three years ago oh bloody hell uh, could even before it was def yeah the channel was started a long time ago but yeah, it, it pretty much four. didn't do anything for about two years and it started up again in in november last year so yeah cause... it's almost almost been a year of kind of been doing it like you know every week was it, I can't remember, because was we playing Blood Bolt at the time you were telling me you were going to do it, or did you just start it and then we had that game of Blood Bolt? Ooh, it's about... Yeah, I think, actually, it was about the same time. Yeah, it was about the same we, time, yeah, because I can't... Yeah, because I, so, I ended my job, so we, we you had a day off, and yeah. I didn't have a job at the time, so we could, like, play a game midweek. So that's, yeah, that's what we did. And then I was, I was just ramping up to start the channel, because before I got, like, a new job, I had like a, a month off, so I had like plenty of time to start the channel. So yeah, I was just, we was just ramping up the channel then. Yeah, because I think I contacted you to say, oh, go, go keep at it, dude. It was good to see you back. Or no, good to see you back or something like that. And then, then we got chatting again, because I don't think we spoke properly for six to eight months or something at one point. And since the channels, we've actually been talking a lot more again, haven't we? Oh it's yeah, no, it's definitely been good. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we... <laughs> Have you met up for an actual? I don't think we met up for a game since I game of Blood Bowl. No, but. no, no. I don't <laughs> think you've ever had a, a free time at the same time I've been free, and that's the problem with um, work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and other commitments. Um, yeah, life life gets in the way of uh, <laughs> channel, and then channel gets in the way of life. It's so an ongoing I, problem. I do want to bring up, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he does do golf story on his channel from the Nintendo Switch, which is a great uh, little series. I really, really enjoyed watching that. That convinced convinces me i do want to get a switch at some point uh when money is a bit better for me uh at the same time i will be picking up monster hunter for that because i do you know it's something i do very much enjoy playing is monster hunter on my 3ds and now my pc as well go go check my let's plays out as well guys <laughs> but at the same time you also did uh wolfenstein you blossom tales yep. Um, yeah, Blossom, Blossom Tales should be ending this week. Oh, he's ending. Oh, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm not going to lie, everyone. I've only got onto the second video recently. It's it's quite a short series. I think there's uh. about nineteen or twenty videos in total. So I finished recording it last weekend. So, so my job today is to edit the last three or four videos. So because Golf Story took you quite some time, didn't it? That game was a lot longer than I thought. Yeah, <laughs> I was, was just sorry. I think on. it's like. 15 hours 16 hours game but then if you sp like spread that into like 20 minute videos that's actually a lot of i think it was 40 it's 40 something 44 Four, very... yeah there's in, in the 40s somewhere it's a mm. it's a long but also like really re rewarding series because it's pretty funny that like the, the writer of that game is is pretty good so even if you don't find me funny then <laughs> the, the game <laughs> itself is pretty funny so that helps Yes, no, I, I have to say, I was quite enjoying um, sort of the humour from it and stuff like that. At the same time, you transitioned your channel slightly through it as well, didn't you? You went from not having a video of yourself in, sorry, uh, recording uh, oh, that little box in the corner of yourself. Oh, the, uh, the face cam. Cam, yeah. And then you, and it's quite funny because sometimes I found that funny because you'll be days, obviously you were recording when the sun was low. 
Oh yeah, and the sun and... gets right in your eyes. <laughs> and you can't play golf. Um, and it, it has to be funny as well though, because like it's terrible. Because it's even like with my friends, one my uh, another friend of mine who plays Monster Hunter as well, who I'm hopefully going to be doing this with at some point. Sometimes when he plays, I'm like, it's over there, the thing's over there, or and like oh, yeah. sometimes you on yours as well. I'm like, I can see it. I can hear you talking about it. And then I will play maybe the same game, or not the same game, but I will play something. And I'm sure people do the same thing. Or I've watched myself play something from before that I, you know, played. And I'm like, oh, really? I missed that? It was there? Oh, yeah. When, <laughs> when you edit videos, you're just like... Uh, even if, like, I finish a video and then, like, edit it straight afterwards, then mm. when I'm editing it, I'll be like, oh, you're an idiot. It's just there. So then the next episode... Like, I just go straight to the thing, and then like, it might look like I've looked at a guide or something, but then I was just editing the video, and I was just like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Like, when you're not trying to, mm. like, think about recording and playing the game at the same time, and you're just, like, concentrating on the game, it's, like, so much easier. So, oh, it yeah, is. it's quite, quite a challenge sometimes to be on the ball and also to continue talking. Yeah, no, because for me, I'm also tr trying to be very secure about swearing, because anyone who knows me in real life... <laughs> um, I, I, I can swear like a trooper sometimes and on my channel I've been very good not to actually especially with monster hunter because there's been times when the monsters have done stuff and I'm like mm, mm, I can feel it inside brewing <laughs> and just making sure I stay within character and not swearing has not been easy sometimes on my channel you do a pretty good job at staying in character though. I don't feel I could continually do it's... like do, do the voice so Oh, I guess you've had a pretty good practice like, with all the uh, the role playing games. So yeah, actually, that's, that's something I wanted to bring up as well. Because um, I I did I have to say I had great fun doing the Star Wars with uh, with you guys. You know, I really do miss that group of people. Not sure I should name anyone, so I'm not going to. Because I'm not sure if they would be happy or not if we did. But they they were good guys, really really good. And the one of the other people in the group was a bloody good GM in as in yeah. D and D. And it was a shame it, uh, shame it all came to an end, unfortunately. I, unfortunately, my other commitments came up for me, which I wanted to focus on. I'm not going to go into that either. And so I was like, okay, guys, see you later. I'll, I'll be, you know, just... And then it just seemed to have faded away, which is a shame, because I was hoping to come back but at some point. I kind of, like, moved out of London as well, so it kind of, like, life happened for, like, about three or four people at the same time. Yeah. So it kind of... It was quite hard to kind of keep the core group together but it was it was uh, an excellent group like we alternated between um D, &D and the uh, star wars Edge of the Empire, game. yeah yeah and I'm... it was it was it was a good mix but it yeah. was a good mix of people but also a good mix of uh, games as well i've um to because I've, I've done it on my, i've got in my channel how to make a character I've, i'm going to be starting um warhammer version um version 4 role play soon uh, that's a lot, lot darker um, than version 3. Um, oh, yeah. Similar to version 2, but the rules are different. Um, yeah, it's... it's um, it, uh, if someone did, has not played roleplay before and doesn't know Warhammer or, or anything like that, I wouldn't bring them to it, if I'm being honest. Oh, it, okay. You, need, you definitely need prior knowledge. It's not just like... prior knowledge. It's a very dark game. It's very um, and I I I I'm I'm going to enjoy I'm going to enjoy um, running it with my you know certain friends of mine, but uh, yeah I, I I wouldn't if I didn't know someone, uh, or this is someone's first ever time doing role play I would definitely not pick this one as someone's first role play, to play. <laughs> I've only played uh, the the Warhammer one which had a lot of cards. Was that two third, or three? Third, third. Edition. Yeah, that's the one. I, that's yeah. the one I played. Yeah, that's the one that I uh, I, I was like what. I'm not touching this again. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't I, enjoy it. It was, it was all right. I mean, I just enjoyed playing Warhammer, well, but it, and like role playing, like I can't compare it to the other ones. So, like, I don't know if it was good or bad, but it was, it was fun just being in that universe. Yeah, no, that's what I, you know, I, I kind of really I enjoyed, you know, like Warhammer version one and two. One is th just think of like the the way of explaining Warhammer one is. It's starting out as Warhammer was starting out, really, um, in the 80s, is the first edition. Second oh, okay, so it's, it's very uh, rough and, like... Yeah, that was, that was version one. Yeah. Version two 
We started off with Black Industries. Is it Black Industries? Yeah, it's Black Industries, which is black, a thing from Black Library. Oh, okay. Then Fantasy Flight bought it. And th- that only went for three, four years before F- Fantasy Flight went, yeah, we're not doing this anymore. Here's our, here's our role play. Now, if they, for me, if they brought out the book similar, not similar as in everything like Star Wars, but I mean, if they explained the rules as well as they did in the Star Wars one, I think it would have done much better. And also the price wasn't as stupid as it was when it first came out. 100 quid for a freaking core rule set. No, thank you. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's like a premium board game, but like yeah. a really, really premium board game with a bunch of expansions. Yeah, that's a bit rich. Yeah. But they did have a lot of cards, though. <laughs> but, but still. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So there's, there's my little moan about version three. Let's get that out of the way. Um, <laughs> but then also saying that, we, again, me and you have played Dreadball. A good few times as well before, didn't we? Oh yeah, no, we uh, we've had a bit of a ongoing grudge match. So yeah, um, I won't let this gentleman use my dice in any game I play against him. He will I, if I ever set a dice with me, unless of course I'm the GM of a role playing game. Then yes, he can use my dice. I didn't mind in D and D him using my dice. They seem to just be as lucky for him. That, no, they weren't always, were they? Actually, no. I think there's a been a few times where it's kind of we're like okay i'll use your dice and we'll be able to do this easy and then yeah. it's definitely kind of been a face palm moment yeah i think you roll one of them let you roll one one of my dice you actually refused to use at one point i think because yeah, it, it was so it was, unlucky yeah it was definitely a series of failures and it was like one of those options like moments when the dm uh, the dm was like okay but you've got a second chance and then you fail that and then it's like you could see him thinking, should I give him a third chance? This is really going to derail the story if he messes this up. And then, like, you mess it up and you're like, oh. Going back <laughs> to talking about the, at DM, one of the things I found amazing that he had. Uh, do you remember at one moment he, he came out with, um, doesn't matter what you guys do, I've already pre-planned this. And <laughs> so we thought, all right. And he did. He actually did. Yeah, he pretty much had a <laughs> uh, kind of, like, Either he knows us very well, so he knows what kind of sick things he would do. I I, I wouldn't say he... Or, <laughs> or yeah, he just literally had every eventuality planned out. So yeah. it was like we could literally do anything and he had like the whole world sorted. Yeah, and it was brilliant. That's I loved it. It was so open. So brilliant. It was... Yeah, I... I do miss... I do miss... I wish in a way, you know, some of us could meet up again and do some stuff, but... Uh, it's this again life life and other commitments at this minute you know the fact i'm getting to play arkham horror at least once a month makes me happy <laughs> oh that's pretty cool i've yeah. not i've not played arkham horror but um it's the card game the one I oh okay yeah not the uh not the role playing no not the role play. oh uh call of cthulhu i haven't played for a while oh yeah sorry uh, yeah i heard that's pretty pretty tough yeah well that's um warhammer version four i, I don't want to talk too much about role playing all of this at this minute guys i don't want this to be mine in his main conversation i'm just i'm gonna be very quick with this now um warhammer version 4 is very tough there's actually a thing with humans where there's a talent called doomed and if you can actually predict in a way how your character could die so if you said a man in green would kill me so you could have goblins nurgle worshippers or someone wearing a green cloak if they killed you you could take your neck your next character you rolled up would get half the experience from your last one okay yeah it, it's the way you start you you might not even start off with a hand weapon and they're not cheap so it's kind of this is what i mean why I'd, i'm not sure i'd want to make someone play this as their first role play <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> you know some don't even start off with cloaks so like winter starts coming and they're like i'm freezing i'm freezing and they start getting minus that it's really worrying in that sort of sense but i don't want to knock the role play because i'm really looking forward to running it <laughs> at the same time and so are my friends who um there's a few of my friends who've wanted me to do it it's i'm also but i'm a little annoyed because i thought i could have a group of four and I'm not going to go into the reasons why, but my some of my old old friends that I've done role play with years and years ago, one of the one of them asked me very nicely, "Can we please not have the new guys in?" And I was like, "Oh, why is that?" He went, "I think you would water your gameplay down." 
And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, I think you'd be a bit too nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, fair enough. So I'm not going to say any more about that. But uh, yeah, so he wants my old GM himself in the game. So I remember, you remember what I was like in Age of the Empire. Some of the stuff I, yeah. I made up in that, so... It was tough, but fair. No, you did, no, you asked for it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but then saying that, I liked what you did. It helped keep the thing interesting. Um, you know, Simon... I, oh, no, I didn't want to say names, but there, there was one. Um, I liked I like having him in a role play. I also dislike having him in a role play, because it seems like he wants to find what breaks the game and use it. I just want to cause as much trouble as possible cool. for... Yeah. For you and the other players. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to, like, cause chaos. That's all. Even what? if I'm a, a good character, I still want to kind of push that. Yeah. That boundary a little bit. Like... No, you, no, you did. You did. And that was fun. Um, I love doing all... Di that's the thing about roleplay, though. I love doing all different voices. Um, you know, uh, how many... I, I kept using so many different types. You know, the, the young racer, the young American racer. I'm not doing my voices on here, guys, because I don't want to offend anyone. Um, but I did do different accents and stuff like that for different characters. You know, like the Imperial Commander was one of the voices I was using when he used to talk to you. I kind of liked being slight condescending and stuff like that. And he would, you know, like... Um, you didn't actually meet the proper rebel people did you no you did you got um no, they, 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 they kidnapped us yeah they, <laughs> they hijacked and they stole one of the um other ships didn't they that you were hoping to have two ships with as well well then if i remember rightly oh yeah yeah you, you stole a ship and stuff like that and yeah and i don't want to go into too much oh and we're, we're probably never going to go back to playing it um basically the person who stole that ship was actually um a family member to those two girls you're also trying to find oh yeah yeah so I remember them. at one point he's going to be coming back and that was at the last bit we was at you know when i had that um criminal olympics which i am not going into guys um <laughs> but yeah i'm not going to go too deep into it all but yeah and you know, I, I enjoyed it i really enjoyed actually running the games for you guys and stuff like that anyway yeah the, uh, the criminal olympics was uh was really fun yes no it was especially when you met your old boss and i can't do him i can't talk Guys, think of that old person that basically doesn't care what he says, and yet this gent who's a, who's a minor crime lord, who my um, Steve basically owed money to. Yeah, it was pretty pretty fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, but probably not not. Uh, I would not for... appropriate to do it <laughs> for the channel. Talking. No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, but anyway, changing that. Dreadball, going back to Dreadball yes. for a minute. Now, the, you've got a video on your channel every minute of us, me and you playing is um, Corporation versus Corporation. Now, I want yep. to ask, have you played the next edition? Because I haven't. I have not, no. no. I, I, think, I think because I started playing Dread Bull because I couldn't play Blood Bowl. Mm. So I, I played Dread Bull like, quite a bit when it first came out. Or like, me and yourself played like, quite a few games. Yeah. Um, I not, played... not just on the channel but like just kind of in general we played quite a bit and um like i really enjoyed that and it is it is different to blood bowl yeah and i do enjoy the fast pace and it's kind of like oh if it's going a bit wrong you can kind of pull it back whereas blood bowl it, if it's going wrong it's probably going to go wrong i agree with you on that actually um, um but then then blood bowl came out at roughly the same time as second edition dread bowl I think or... second edition came out before. No, no, no. Blood Bolt came out way before. Oh, okay. Blood Bolt. But yeah, at, at that point, I was invested in Blood Bowl again. So I think it came out um, December last year. Not was it December last year? No, no, not last year. The year before. Blood Bowl or Dread Bowl? Uh, Blood Bowl. It was just before yeah. November uh, two thousand and sixteen. November time. Like oh okay December. yeah sounds about right um because I've, I've done it uh, i played on ready steady play uh gentleman that i know um i was on his channel a few times um to be honest i haven't been on his channel for a little while not because i've had a falling out with him at all i still think mike's a great guy i just hate being in front of a camera it makes <laughs> me so nervous and so fidgety i'm i've stopped enjoying playing the games so uh, it's one of the I reasons think it's Sorry, something you definitely get used to 
Mm. You but, got a you got to work with the camera. <laughs> yeah, and I, I I don't know if you know. At first, I don't seem too bad, but if I, if I go along, I start becoming fidgety. That's in that video as well, and in some others. Um, so it's the reason why I've not been on his channel for a while. It's not I've got nothing against Ready Steady Play. Go out and watch him, guys. They're great. His, Mike's a great guy. He does some really good um, stuff as well. I'm, hopefully, at some point, I can maybe get him doing this with me as well. But yeah, I it just I got so so like worked up being in front of the camera uh, to the point where I knew I was it, even before I got to his to do it. I was a little like I'm not enjoying this. I'm already not enjoying this sort of thing. So I feel you know. I didn't want I'll leave that there but yeah but going back to talk about Dreadball sorry again guys drifting off not sure <laughs> why I did that um you've got two me and you dot corporations but yeah they, I think it came out just after Christmas of uh around near when Blood Bolt came out ah okay um or maybe even like the salute of that year it was near you know the that would yeah, that would make sense. They Mantic like to release stuff around Salute, don't they? Because it's a good, good time to kind of like sell a lot of stuff. Well, the thing, uh, I almost picked it up at last Salute, but because I already bought mass loads of things, um, again, I'll check out my Salute videos, guys, because you'll see how much I've got there. And my thoughts of Salute videos, not the actual Salute videos, but watch them as well. <laughs> Sorry, dude, little cheap plug. Um, That's all good. But at the same time, I, I didn't because I already spent like I think it was like 300 400 pounds yeah you like to go big at salute <laughs> yeah I have to and then I have to put load more money back into my you know credit card and stuff like that but this year instead of doing like last year I, I uh, they, uh, where I failed to pick up some stuff this year I, I bought all my stuff I wanted straight away oh yeah yeah and then I took my camera out and started filming from the back and making my way forward Oh, that seems like a much more sensible <laughs> i i always go with like about a hundred pound budget and then spend about 150. yeah <laughs> so it's easily then... done it's easily done oh yeah no it's so easy uh, i didn't go this year and i feel that was a wise choice like i really enjoy salute but it was definitely a wise choice <laughs> i'm i'd love to meet i'd love to talk to other some youtubers whilst i'm there i've, I've started managing to talk to one or two um but again i um some of these events that i, I go to because I'm, I'm looking at going to some southeast london wargaming event this year oh uh selwig thank you because we had a game of bowl action at their club one time didn't we yeah i used to um when i was wargaming a lot more i uh i was a, a member there for for a year a year and a half and uh it's a really really good club so if you're actually in the southeast like london area then like yeah. I recommend that they they meet up in um, where is it Catford? Catford, yeah, yeah. I um yeah no that's a, actually it was a really good club. I got we we I played against your po Polish. Polish, yeah. It's the only it's the only army I got built with this minute. I need to build my Germans, my early Germans, um, also my early British. I want to build as well, but I've just been so uh, with other stuff. I it's like I've only just built one of my Necromunda gangs. I'm ah sure. okay. <laughs> I've actually painted three models, believe it or not. I don't believe that. <laughs> Crap, but <laughs> I've still painted them. Um, but yeah, so... Dread, yeah, Dreadball, again. So, there was this thing, when I think when I, me and you started playing, we, I think version... Because um, I used to play someone called Andrew as well. Um, you guys played him in the league, if I remember rightly. Cause yes. George, someone else went yeah. Um He was the army gentleman. Yes, I remember yeah. him now. Yeah, uh, I played him a couple of times at um, Dreadful yeah, as there was, well. There was a few um, official tournaments at Dark Sphere in in London that we mm. did. You enter those? No, were you, no. I, I, uh, every time they were actually planned, I would put on a Saturday, or one was actually put on an Easter Sunday. Uh, yeah, I went to I went to the first two, mm. and uh, the first one I actually came second. So, oh, cool. For, for a time, I was the second best dreadful player in london <laughs> oh. i guess <laughs> um and then the second one i came about mid table the first one you i don't remember who you're playing but the second one you, you're the convicts weren't you because the convicts yeah, the, have the, first, the first one i was uh corporation that was my team yeah cool yeah see i like corporation as well um i i actually quite liked the um orcs you, you'd have to kill quick 
Um, and oh, the, yeah. And the best tactic to use against Orcs was always get the three or four pointer straight away. Mm. Just get three or four pointer. Try and keep a striker that end so he has to concentrate some players that way and then maybe get some quick goals with so he can't basically bring it back. Because he's and kill all their goblins so yeah. they can't score. Because <laughs> they can't score properly. Yeah, there was. A, I think it was a silly rule. I think they changed it for number two. Um, jacks could only move one step if they were going to throw the ball. Oh yeah, because you never used your jacks at all. Unless you, just, you had a special card. Yeah, like, I literally just stood there doing nothing. Yeah, unless you pulled a card. So. Mm. Are you? Are you most, I mostly use them as uh, to get extra dice. For yeah, like yeah, just move tackles. them in to help. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah, or just yeah, just like bog down players, but I, yeah, you didn't really use them all that much. All right, guys. Well, when I was first played Steve, I hadn't beaten Steve for I think four or five games, and there were like three <laughs> games where my dice were just loving you, and I was I couldn't do anything. So I, yeah. I think that, that's when I made the rule of not using my dice against you, uh, allowing you to use my dice ever again. That's also worked. when you you <laughs> used your was it unnamed? Oh, the nameless. I brought out, yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought out the nameless one time when you you, you you had time for one more game, so I brought out the nameless. Yeah, yeah, that's that's when the winning streak uh, ended. Yeah, the nameless. I, they were brutal. <laughs> I only bring out the nameless um, when people, like, well, I, you know, like yourself when you were going for this long winning streak and stuff like that with me, and you know. And you, you, you're rubbing it in my face a little as well at that moment. I was like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm going to get you. Um, so, you know, I, don't, like, I don't believe I rubbed it in your face. <laughs> I'm, so. joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm Pro joking. Probably did a little bit. Um, um, but yeah, after the... In a, fun, in a fun way. Yeah, no, not in a nasty or any sort of way. Do you know, I actually won a game. Oh no, I drew a game um, with the dwarfs. Again, do you remember Nick? Nicholas? Um, the Australian guy. Oh yes, yes. I managed to draw with him. With the dwarfs versus orcs, did did no one score? No, no, it was one one. But at that <laughs> point, I was so shattered, I just wanted to go. <laughs> and he's like, "No, we've got to play extra, uh, sudden death." And I'm like, "No, <laughs> yeah, we'll call it here." Yeah, we're calling it here. No, 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 there has to be a winner. Um, because we managed to do that one time. Because, but humans were my, basically my main team. I was using. Um, I did think about using, you know, the fish people. When like, oh yeah, but I I lost interest when it suddenly became like season four, five, and six. At that they point. did release a lot of teams in a very short amount of time, and I which, think sorry, which was on. good. I feel like it was good, but at the same time, it was kind of like there needed to be a bit of space, like I, a, a little bit more space in between them. Yeah, I think they should have used um, dead zone rules for the second edition because I know it went it stayed at the D six. I think they should have used the D8, so there's certain teams could be slightly better at something, and you know, so you could have that uh, one different point. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Instead. I um, I did actually play a little bit of Dead Zone um, version one and two, and version two was a, a pretty good game actually. Did you play Chris? Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a um, like we played about three or four games, and yeah, they were they were really good. The first version one i felt like if you were the corporation you could like if you had a, a strong first or second turn then you would just win i felt and then yeah there's a couple of running teams though there was the there was this ones that would die very quickly but i'm so happy they managed to bring out a faq for was um oh is it the jedward jedward the Are ones the ones that read guys yeah the elfie guys that would read you make you step away from them and stuff like that and oh they had, yeah the pacifist guys yeah but you you could but uh, there was so, so many rules was you at the tournament when someone got stupid about them rules or was that actually at one of the mantic day things i can't remember. i think that might have been at the mantic day okay because someone like basically found a loophole in the rule or something they had to basically faq it yeah they they actually banned that team from tournaments as well did they yeah because they could just like dodge out of everything and score really easy so it was kind of like oh i didn't know that. Not, not not an auto win team but i felt like it the... was very much in your favor 
I felt that was a nameless for me. You know that team that could just because I, I won seven nil because you, they had good strikers, and they had rock hard, um, rock hard blockers. Yeah. And their jacks were useful because they had tentacles, but they weren't actually jacks. They were another form of guard. So you basically had two sets of different types of guards. And yeah, they were qu straight. they were quite powerful. Yeah. Um, I think they I think they are beatable. It's just it was. I have lost as the nameless. I have yeah, you need, I think you need to know how to beat the nameless. And then at the time, I did not know how to beat the nameless. <laughs> Believe it or not, they've actually got this special thing where yeah, they get an extra dice for picking up stuff. And I actually played a game where with a friend who beat me. And I, I, can't remember, I think he used cooperation. It was only 1-0. Because I actually most of his team wasn't even on the field anymore. Ah. Um, but I kept rolling ones and twos for picking up the ball. Uh, okay. I couldn't roll anything else. Even when I, I had four dice trying to pick up the ball, I'd only roll one to two. I was... Yeah, that day I was swearing. <laughs> and yeah, my, my, my friend beat me. And I was like, no! <laughs> Not the nameless! I have a my loss! Pris my pristine record. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so you played as the convicts as well. How did yeah, you yeah. find them? Um, they were like a little bit more, they were quite like the the corporation. I think that's why I kind of gravitated towards them because they weren't too different. Okay. But but also like a little bit more punchy, I guess. Okay. Like a little bit more fighty. So, but not like orc fighty, just, just a little bit more. Mm. I... And I think that just kind of like played to my play style where like, I like to be a fairly all-round team, but I do like to be a little bit fighty. Yeah, because they if actually I can. Their their guard was actually quite good, wasn't he, for the corporation? Not corpor um, com convicts. They yeah, yeah, it really just, good it, it just kind of st if you had like, if you were playing orcs or like a like a bully team, then mm. you could use them to kind of not be bullied as much, I guess. Okay. So okay. you you can kind of like you had a bit of more defense mm. for yourself. So yeah, you didn't. Or if you were playing like a weaker team, you could like be the bully a bit more. So it kind of it made that play style just a little bit easier. Fair enough. Also, you talk about Blood Bolt. Have you played recently since the last time me and you played? I think I might have had one or two games since then, but mm. not not a great deal. Because I think since I played you, I've now got the Chaos team. And Nurgle's Rotters. Oh, that Nurgle team is horrible to play against. I've played against them before. Uh, and, um, like, I've got a friend who has, like, a like a lot of teams from back in the day. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I played against his Nurgle team before, and it was it was horrible. I, <laughs> like, I don't know how to beat that team. That team were just, like... I, I, I've i not actually time. used them yet. Because they, they, they're quite... Technically, some of them are quite weak because they got rotten. They're linesmen. You know, so they've got. Uh, I think they're more prone to being hurt, the linesmen. But I know they're like, well, like the the chaos warrior types, but they're called something else now. And they're yeah, I know, I know the ones you mean. I can't think what they're called. And they're past the, instead of gores or as they were known as before, or they're known as pa a pasto gore or something. So it means like play. Oh, uh, pasto gore. Pasto gore, yeah. And but the miniatures look great. I mean, the Games Workshop, damn, last couple of years have really, really some of the Blood Bolt models and stuff like that have been amazing. Yeah, they've been pretty cool. They definitely look like really, really, really nice on the tabletop. Like, oh, my, I, I really like the Skaven team. The Skaven team is one of my favorites, I think. Skaven team, um, one of my friends has a way of building um, a gutter runner, so I think he can actually get a touchdown from running. If you can get past tackle zones yeah there is i think you need a a bit of experience so like you can only do it in the league i don't think you can do it straight no, off. No, of course, of course but you can't. yeah yeah in the uh blood bowl uh computer game or blood bowl 2 computer game i um i had a scaven team which you could i think i could do a two turn touchdown so, so i used to run up the score quite quite high on that so what do you own the Blur, blood bowl 2 on uh playstation ah damn I've been thinking about what? getting it. It keeps popping up on the sale. So if I know people who I know on the PCs would get it, which I know you do play some PC games sometimes, but not recording it. 
But... Actually, let me just look at my Steam library. I... Maybe I do have it. Uh, but I have been <laughs> I don't... thinking about picking it up. It is an excellent game. No, anyway, it's, it's just Blood Bowl. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, 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 it's just Blood Bowl. So if you like Blood Bowl, then you're going to have uh. a good time. And if you don't like Blood Bowl, then it's pointless. Mm. Um, well, the funny yeah, thing me... is, I talking about Blood Bowl for a minute. I, I went off Blood Bowl for a long time. And then when they re-released it, uh, I was talking to a couple of people that I knew. And I was like, I don't know if I want to get into this, blah, blah, blah. Then I had a game. And I was like, yeah, I'm picking up the set next week. I'm going to. And then told Mike I did it and then built everything. And then we played like almost the same weekend I bought it, I think. I was building oh, sorry. It. You uh, just cut out then. So I oh. uh, no idea what you just said. <laughs> oh, okay. Hopefully that will... Oh, okay. I was just talking about Blood Bowl, and when it first, when I first got it, you know, this this new version, um, mm -hmm. I was a bit reluctant to get it first off because of my experiences of playing Blood Bowl before. I didn't overly enjoy. Uh, I think it's, it's definitely a frustrating game. Oh, it can yeah, be a frustrating. It if it be. all goes wrong, then it's it really is all going wrong. <laughs> So yeah, so I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if I want to. But then there was a few people like, no, Matt, just just get. It. And I had a game. Um, I drew, I drew my first game with Mike when he. Oh no, I don't want to say stuff like that. When he, you know, I want people to go watch it. Um, well, it ended the way it did. Um, that was a little frustrating because I never beaten Mike. So there was this moment where I could have, <laughs> and it didn't happen. I was like, no. Um, uh, think of like how you know when I when we, when we, me and you played, I got a touchdown yeah. very quickly with because I was the humans and you were the orcs. I got a, a you know got that quite quick. Then after that, I had to work a bit more because I started having more players turn up in the KO bit. But Mike actually had loads of players end up in the um, injured box. Oh yeah, yeah. If you can injure people, then it's definitely yeah. gonna help. So I think he got a little frustrated as the game went on, but started really enjoying it at the end. Oh yeah, it can. Yeah, <laughs> I think if you if straight off the bat you're getting players injured, mm. then it's it's like oh this game seems really unfair. Yeah. I mean, if you play a lot of Blood Bowl, then there's definitely going to be games when that does happen. But there's going to be games when you're doing it to other people. Like my first my first game of Blood Bowl with this new edition mm. i was skaven and i played orcs okay and literally the first dice roll of the game was um like my blitzer or storm vermin or whatever they're called in the skaven team uh just like straight up killed a a, uh, a blitzer on the orc team uh, and <laughs> like the guy was just like oh this is gonna be one of those games isn't it because like he played it like previously um like when he was younger as well and it was like yeah i think it's gonna be one of those games <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so, nice yeah. it's nice to be in, to be to giving it rather than receiving it in blood Bowl, as they say uh, oh yeah de <laughs> definitely definitely yeah no because i mean mine and your game was a fun game that was a nice little uh just little playthrough your friend who painted them as well though dude the the colors that he did was amazing oh yeah he i did, feel uh, a really really good job on those I, I literally i was gently picking up these models moving them because i'm like i don't want to chip the paint it looks so good um <laughs> They were brilliant. They even had like little grass bits on the stands as well that made them look great. Oh yeah, they um, yeah. So basically, I had a, uh, a yeah commission painter sort of do those for me. I mean, it wasn't actually that expensive. I mean, the good thing about Blood Bowl is at least you know it's only going to be like was it like twelve models? Yeah. For a team, and then I guess maybe a little bit more if I've got like uh, the got oh, yeah six sixteen at max. So it's never. I mean, commission painting's not like super cheap. But for, mm. for 60 models, it's not the same as having like a 40k army getting painted or something, is it? So it's, no, it's, it's true. Yeah. relatively affordable. And uh, yeah, I just kind of, I quite like playing with painted miniatures. So I got my whole set like painted up just so that if I ever want to have a quick game with someone, then we can all play with like mm. painted miniatures and it just looks all nice. And It did. No, it, 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 yeah, it was, was, they did an amazing job, mate. They did an amazing job. Also... Uh, you, I know you. You've played Frostgrave, though, haven't you? We, me and you, never have against each other, but you have played it before. Oh, yep, yep. I played uh, a little bit of Frostgrave, um, mostly when it first came out. I've got a few of the add-ons, and I got on some of the uh, the expansion like kits with all the models, but I never actually got those painted. I, I did have my my actual core warband. I've got painted up, which is quite nice, and I did like a, a lot of conversions with those, so it's pretty pretty 
like nice war bands, but I actually have to go. Oh no, go ahead. Um, I really like um, Frostgrave in the sense that there's no such. There's it's just a war band. There's no this is better than this. Maybe the magic might be, but that's about it. And I find the magic is kind of balanced. They had yeah. to change. A, I think because I bought the new set, the new magic card set, and I think they had to change the rules for Bone Dart though for Necromancers. Oh, okay. Well, Bone Dart's pretty good, or you, you, they were so easy to cast, and they did a lot of damage. Ah, uh, okay. I can't remember what. Um... I think oh, made... I was an en Enchanter. That's who I liked being. Mm. I played as yeah. a Necromancer. Ah, uh, so using the Bone Dart then. Practically every, <laughs> my, uh, just practically doing that all the time uh one of my friends discussed also i was a um my war band was a little bit bigger than not bigger than his um yeah it, i know it wasn't bigger i just had a lot more thugs than mine and a, one oh, or two okay. powerful characters you know like I, I had a marksman i had um a barbarian i had you one make of... me really want to play frostgrave now <laughs> <laughs> sorry dude <laughs> And then I've, I had a few... I've actually got quite a bit of uh, a the scenery, like the scenery as well. Yeah, um, I... so I could actually facilitate that pretty pretty easily at my flat. Yeah, well, one, let me know one Sunday if you can do it, or one Wednesday when you're not working, and if the, yeah. you know, and we'll def, have a game. Think, yeah, and maybe maybe I'll bring the camera and we can have a little talk about it on my channel. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm 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 looking at my Frostgrave books actually on the on the shelf right now. I'm thinking, yeah, actually, I could. Uh, oh, cool. Maybe I'll grab the grab the Warband out. Yeah, and definitely, because I, I played it like quite quite intensively for a short amount of time, but then they've pretty much been in the carry case for like a good two years since then. Oh, okay, because so. you got you got the whole set for that uh, ruins, didn't you? I only got a couple. I did an unboxing of the packet. Oh. You know, have a look what you get inside your pack. Yeah, I got, um, I think, the first two or three packs. So I'm trying to remember how many how many packs there was. I've also got the um, the foreground castle, like destroyed castle as well. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I've actually, you know what? My favourite thing about wargaming is actually the scenery. Like, I, I mean, I like playing the games, but I just really like playing on, like, a really nice really nice table so i think most of the money i ever spend at salute is always at foreground and yeah i've got like quite an extensive uh collection of uh foreground like um like buildings and stuff like that so i've got a few buildings i i don't i wouldn't have enough to play um frost frost growth though because you really need a, a, a packed terrain really to play it properly if you read the rules you know like a there shouldn't be 12, uh, an eyesight of 12 inches or something like that along a certain way. Um, but no, I, yeah, I could I could do it because I started buying like old worldy buildings for Warhammer mm. uh, back in the day. Um, so when I was playing 8th edition Warhammer. Yeah. And then we both started playing like bolt action. So I started to buy kind of more like European-y but old -y kind of buildings. Yeah. So they kind of work for, for both. And I've got, yeah, fairly, like, a good collection of that. And then I bought the ruins and the castle on top of that as well. So I could do a pretty packed... Cool. I've, I've got one of their fantasy buildings. Table. You know that fantasy realm, uh, Forgotten Realms things they've got, they do? Oh, um, yeah, with, like, the kind of like, exaggerated pointy roofs. Yeah, I've got one of them buildings um, blown up, sort of slightly destroyed. So I've bought one of them. Again, with the intention of building it, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it, unfortunately for me, it's about space, and I don't really want to start buying cases now for terrain. <laughs> yeah, I've I've got a uh, under the stairs in our flat. It's supposed to be a communal space, but it's literally just all my war game and stuff, <laughs> like <laughs> piles and boxes. <laughs> like my neighbours must hate me. They're just like, "What is this crap?" <laughs> it's like, "Well, that's that's a prohibition era wa warehouse." <laughs> like, <laughs> why does anyone need that? Oh, uh, I, I need it because I play war gaming in my flat once a year. <laughs> I'm going to go back to computer gaming for a minute. So you also play the PC. Oh, yeah. yeah, know, yeah. So what would be that one PC game you've played at this minute you really like? Um, well, I guess I've... Like, so my, my day job is like a graphic designer, so I've always had uh, like Apple Macs for the last, I don't know, like 15 years. Okay. Um, but then with the channel, I decided that I want to do more kind of streaming. And it's just it's just easier to stream with uh with a PC. So I bought a 
like a, a HP Omen um, gaming laptop. Okay. It's not like super super spec, but it's it's pretty good. It's like good. At, it's better than my my PS4. So uh, I kind of been picking up a few a few games kind of on like uh, on sales and that kind of thing. And I went on to Humble Bum hum, Humble Bundle, I think, and they had a Tomb Raider sale one. Oh wow! One um one month like a few months ago. Okay. I think it was oh no it was the Square Enix uh sale weekend and like in the 90s and the noughties I was never really a Tomb Raider fan but I did really love the uh, the Uncharted games okay and I was I was talking to some friends and they were like oh, I think you'd really like Tomb Raiders and I was like oh, I never really liked them they were like but well, you like Uncharted and it's a lo- little bit more like that now but a bit more kind of not RPG but like a little more like open worldy but not open world like those kind of missions and you can build your character up and I was like Okay, so I saw they had Tomb Raider for, I think it was like £7, and then they had Rise of the Tomb Raider for like 13 or £14 with all the DLC. With all the DLC? Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like the Game of the Year edition or Season Pass or, or, or something like that. So mm. I was just like, well, it's like £21, I'm going to get two games. And I was like, well, it doesn't it doesn't seem like a, a massive risk. Like, if I, if I play them for like five hours each or something, then... I feel like I've got my money's worth. Right. I mean, essentially, that's like a cinema ticket, right? And some popcorn yeah. in London. So I was like, you know, if I do do 90 minutes, then that's like the same price as going to the cinema. I don't know, because some cinemas around London, because like the one near me in Walthamstow, I'm not going to go too much into where, um, is only about £8 cinema ticket. But anyway, going back to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one in South London that's £5, but it's okay. a pretty rough cinema and because it's five pounds everyone just goes in and talks so <laughs> like you never go to it unless you go to it like at like one o'clock in the mm-hmm. afternoon mm-hmm. when everyone's at work or something yeah. like that like it's but cr- um so yeah no i i, I really enjoyed i finished tomb raider maybe a couple of weeks ago what, how, uh, how, how much did you complete of it because i've done 70 something percent was um, it 80 or did i do 80 i did quite a bit like most of the main areas i found everything um yeah, I think I'm about eight, around the 80s, 80% yeah. complete. I have to um, say, the first one is brilliant. brilliant. I don't know about the Rise or the Tomb Raider. I, I, I'm really loving Rise at the moment. I'm Hang on, let me click on <laughs> let me click on my Steam again. I'm, I think I'm about 10 hours into it. Oh, okay. So that shows you how much time you get to play because you've had that for a little time now, haven't you? Or did you uh, complete the first one first and then... Yeah, yeah. So I finished the first one like all the way all the way through so the first one i played for 16 hours oh, okay so for seven pounds i'm pretty chuffed with that um i guess if you bought it at the time you would play like multiplayer and that kind of thing but i, I mean, didn't i, no I didn't actually um no no I'm, I'm not gonna go i'm not a big huge fan of a lot of even though monster hunter i do i have played with a lot of people that's because i know a lot of people that have played it on the pc I've had some really strange experiences when I've gone online. There's some trolls that just eventually just make me go, not give up, but I just went to plane to... Uh, it's one of the reasons why I left WoW in the end. Because I was never a proper tank. I could do a tank role, but you'd always end up with someone who was um, either a hunter who kept their pet growling, which meant that built up mass loads of aggro. And then they'll complain that their pets died. Or you get a warlock that kept firing doom... Um, Specked out is um, Doom Bolt or Dark Bolt. I can't remember now because it's been so long since I played. And would just keep shooting that. And you, I'm like, and I'm trying to even cast the stuff on them so I could get the ag- some of the aggro to me. But when you when you put the the high highest ag aggro on a um, certain bosses, there were I think there was like three or four seconds that they would just stay on you. You didn't matter what a warrior or something did unless I I had my um, uh, certain uh, taunt certain taunt shout it wasn't the lowest one it was the highest one that could bring them back but there wasn't much sometimes so people were like you're just crap tank and i'm thinking you need to watch your bloody aggro <laughs> uh well uh, i'm just looking at rise of the tomb raider and i played 10 hours of that okay so how much of the so, tomb raider did you do the first one is that rise of the tomb raider or is that just tomb raider so it's the first one was just tomb raider or tomb raider 2013 yeah so yeah i, I completed the game and did about 80 to 90 percent of the like finding stuff oh cool and then yeah i'm 10 hours into rise of tomb raider but because i've got like the dlc um i got to a point where it was like oh you've unlocked like the uh, enough stuff to do one of the dlc missions 
Oh, okay. And then that that took me like a couple of hours. Well, it's kind of doing a bit of that and a bit of the the kind of um, side quests that other people were giving you because you you find people and they give you like side quests in this one. Oh, fair enough. Um, like once you've done enough of an area, like people turn up and then you can kind of like talk to them. Oh, cool. And um, so I'm yeah I'm I've done one of the DLCs and I think there's like a couple more. But yeah, no, I I don't I think I'm about twenty five percent through the game. Oh fair enough. It says. So I mean I, I think I can't complete or get like a lot of the collectibles because I haven't got the right I'm I'm progressed through the game enough to get like you get a combat knife that allows you to like cut certain things or oh there's like some other kind of like traversal thing that I haven't got yet, so I can't go like everywhere and explore everything. But Yeah, I remember that from the first Tomb Raider. You had to get the crowbar to, to open certain doors or the, you had to get this certain thing to do this and or Yeah, or like that. upgrade certain things. But no, I'm I'm really I'm really loving that because it's kind of got that like crafting like they expanded on the crafting elements. So instead mm. of just being like, oh you get cogs so then once you got so many you can make your gun better. Yeah. It's like oh you get like cogs but then if you get like uh-huh. animal uh, skins yeah. of a certain type, then you can make like a like a stock for your assault rifle, or if you like oh, get cool. like poison mushrooms, like death cap mushrooms and wood and feathers, then you can make poison arrows and like like that kind of thing. And then if you find cans and a certain um, like magnesium ore or something, you can hmm. make improvised uh, like grenades. Oh, cool! So it's yeah, it's a like it's a lot more. It's basically they've got like all the good bits of the first one and then made it like to the next level. It wasn't just like oh, it's just more the same. It's more the same but better. Cool. And, and it looks it looks amazing. Like it really does look. Uh, my really really good. I mean my my laptop's not even like, that great, and it seems to be cool. Pretty my... pretty decent. My two games that I've always been able to go back to play, and sometimes one of them I just restart my character. I, I keep saying to myself, I've got to stop doing it. One of the, the I think I myself, the best PC game I've ever played is Witcher 3. Oh, yeah. I played that on the PlayStation for like quite a bit, but I then put it down a bit too long. Yeah. That, like, I, I'm, I really, fa- not really far, but like maybe like 40 hours into it. So um, I'm fighting like werewolves and stuff that are really hard, but because I haven't played it and not like a lot, I'm mm. really rubbish at the combat now. <laughs> so it was... I just get my ass handed to me. And the other game that I, I've really enjoyed on my PC was uh, Metal Gear Solid: Phantom Pain. Ah, uh, okay. I've not played a Metal Gear Solid since Metal Gear Solid Three, but I really like, I really like the first I... three of those. So I loved one of Metal Gear Solid. Uh, but two, because of the, how long the cuts, you know, little play there was at the beginning and how many cutscenes they were, I was like, I don't want to play this. It actually just, I, I think my, I think your first hour was 45 minutes screen cut, 15 minutes of doing stuff in the second one. Oh. And so I just was like, no, I'm not. That's when I had the old PlayStation. I was like, no, I'm just not playing this. I don't want to play this. Or was that PlayStation 2? The second one came out on. I can't remember. Oh, that's bad. That was, that was Sons of Patriots or something like that, right? Something like that, yeah, I think. Because you, you're not um, Snake in the beginning part. You're this other guy. R- Raiden. Yeah. Wow, well, uh, how did I remember that? <laughs> I think it is Raiden. I think it is. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but number four, uh, number five, Phantom Pain. You know, apart from looking at a bloke's ass as you're going along at the beginning, oh, it's a really good game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give anything away, but uh, literally that, you know, my, my first, like, six, uh, sorry, your first, like, half an hour of the game, even though there's a lot of screen cuts, it's it's really good action flowing, but you are looking into a medical gown from behind someone. <laughs> so it's like, really? Interesting choice. Yeah, I was like, really? But it, it fits the story, though, at the same time. I don't want to say much more. But I've never completed it. I keep restarting. I don't know, and it annoys me because I'm like, no, you can do all those missions. You can even put your gear back to that beginning gear. Um, yeah, I've, I've some missions I can do without even being seen now because how, how much I've played them and stuff like that. Uh-huh. But I get so much enjoyment from doing it. I mean, 
You should finish it, mate. <laughs> no, I know, I know. It's, there's a lot of games I should finish, actually. Um, oh, yeah, like, so many I start, and then, like, yeah. I try to, yeah. Well, unfortunately, because of what happened with my hard drive when it died, I've lost, I, I lost a few videos. So, for, um, oh, what was that one? Moonlighter? Yeah, yeah. I lost a couple of videos there, so, you know, I wasn't getting a lot of views, by this you know by this point really but it was kind of like oh really I... and i think i'm not sure if i released the one when i meet the dungeon the dungeon boss for the fro um the, uh, the forest place or i didn't get around to releasing the one where i beat him so it's kind of like oh no so that's gone that's not there no. anymore and the game doesn't go oh you you know once you've gone there it, it's done dusted a bit like um vampire could start again i suppose or go back to another no vampire's the same vampire was playing y again another game i liked vampire I d it does it's not amazing but it's not a bad game moonlight it was a little fun game yeah I, I enjoyed the um i watched like the first like three or four of those i quite enjoyed you trying to find like the right price to yeah that was really weird and that was actually quite entertaining and especially later on you're like you start getting things that are like two like in the thousands to sell and i'm like do you get it right did i get it wrong did i get it right and sometimes it's like and it's and it's about a five gold coin diff difference for you to know if you have or not and sometimes i've seen things so dirt cheap people are loving me and i wasn't even really realizing it sometimes so yeah <laughs> um but so yeah um i've just loved pc gaming as well but those two games are definitely the ones i would you know suggest but when i lost my hard drive you know I, completing stuff has just not been easy i think uh, i think moonlighter is definitely a game i'm gonna pick up but it, it comes out on the switch in a couple of months so i'm surprised think... it's taken this long to be honest yeah because it, it came out on the on the other consoles already i think at the same time as steam so mm. i'm not sure maybe they started developing it later like when the switch started selling like low like people like a lot of developers say that they've sold like 20 times more on like on the switch in like a month than they did on like steam in the whole time it's been on sale and stuff like that like people are really loving indie games on the switch oh cool so i think maybe a lot of people have kind of been like oh crap we didn't think like this would have a place on the switch and then like they've seen all these other indie developers like making like a whole ton of money but, or like uh oh a lot more money than they would on the other kind of thing and they're like oh we better we better make this on the switch but because they're like months behind it then takes you know several months to catch up i know which on, is a shame but on my 3ds they were pushing some indie games on my old 3ds i used to have um i don't know what the sales are like for the 3ds for the indies but i do I know think, so, i think it it struggled a little bit because like the eShop wasn't great on it i know that there was the yeah, i agree with you on that um so for someone like myself if i was to go into going to this you know getting a switch um the three games i i really want really wanted to get for a switch one of them i, I don't know why i want want them because i could see me getting very frustrated obviously monster hunter xx generations because that's the yep. monster hunter games come out for it um i can actually put on my character from my 3ds onto it as well i think it's the same game but just it, oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's it's um got g rank it's, it, it's got a lot more monsters it's, it's the japanese it's the one they released in japan only isn't it on the 3ds yeah and no, no, it got it. yeah it, it got yeah it did it got released on the 3d um it basically we got generations but normally when we get things get released on the uh, 3ds originally we used to get the ultimate version and now the ultimate would be everything everything they released for that monster hunter game uh, okay. in japan they would release a normal game then they would release something later on that's like i'm not sure if it's tr for them i can't remember and the that has like loads more stuff and g rank because Monster ah, Hunter okay. is sold so well on the 3DS out there. Um, so, so yeah, they basically gave us their the early version. 
when they began as generations because it they because I th- I'm not sure if the cells the cells were good be- better than they had been before but still not good enough but Monster Hunter World has actually been their best selling all round game it's old, oh. over 10 million copies oh wow that's that's not bad because it's only been out since January so uh yeah it, um PlayStation's got the highest percentage though of players. Yeah, I mean, th- th- that came out first, right? And then it came out on the PlayStation and Xbox at the same time. I, I think more people. I think it's more PlayStation's been sold than the new Xbox. Yeah. So yeah, that ma- that makes sense. If they come out at the same time, you'd expect more on the PlayStation just because more people own it. Saying that though, the PC version, um, it was at seven and a half or just over eight, just over eight million when it uh, was sold before. When the PC version came out. It hit over 10 million sales. Wow. I mean, that, that game looks, like, really amazing, but on PC, I bet on some gaming rigs, that just looks, like, disgustingly good. It, <laughs> like, no, it looks... Uh, my, mine's not a bad gaming rig. Mine's two years old now, though, but the graphics card I bought at the time was the one just before the um, 1080. Oh, okay. okay it was, so, so I've got the 980 Armor Ti. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty pretty beefy. I've got, I think I've got a 1050 or a 1060 in mind, but it's a laptop, so it's not like yeah, full. <laughs> it's not like the full 1050 or 1060. It's like laptop edition. Because and the which, thing, yeah, the thing I like as well. I can use my my old Xbox 360 controller for it as well, so I'm well happy. Oh, no, I yeah, I um, I do sometimes plug in my Switch controller into into my laptop which i imagine a lot of pc people would be like what are you doing although i am i have been trying to play tomb raider mouse and keyboard just to get back into mouse and keyboards i'm not super good so i I try and play that game like that dude most of us now play on game pads (laughs) uh oh i I, I, I like i like playing shooters with mouse and keyboard oh shooter definitely shooter definitely with mouse and keyboard with shooting with the mouse but it's just the uh the movement with the keys i'm not like super great at but you know i'm not playing online stuff so it's it's fine oh, fair, enough, fair enough no but again anyway i would love to um also dark souls has oh, not yeah, come that... out on switch yet has it april I... I want to say 19th no sorry not april october 19th i think is the release date and it's yet... around halloween and yet it was originally advertised to come out at the same time as the others. Yeah, I have. Like, no one knows why. Mm. I I assume it's because you can't pause that game. But on a Switch, you can pause every game, if that makes sense. Like, you can oh. go into the you go into the menu and it, and it hangs. So, like, say if I'm playing on the bus, I can just, like, press, like, the kind of, um, like, sleep button and then get off the bus come back into my house and then I can like you know start it up again and it would have paused oh, cool. but then I, I guess because you can't pause that game they probably have to work out how they can do that without like breaking the game yeah because it's the same as Monster Hunter World Monster Hunter World you can't actually um, pause it during the game um, yeah when you're actually playing or out on a hunt you can't pause it's still um, a, you know, a live world sort of thing and yeah, so that's kind of what. Yeah, that's true about Dark Souls because there'll be. I remember times when like I'm playing and suddenly a monster will appear. You know, like I don't. Know, <laughs> you know, like when you need to go pee. Yeah. And you're like, I'll do. <laughs> I, I can play for another thirty seconds. I just. I'll get over here. I'll be. Oh my god, something's happened! No, no, no! I need to go. Please. Don't. <laughs> but you don't want to die because you don't want your souls left in that specific area because it wasn't easy to get there. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I imagine. run, run. A nightmare. <laughs> sorry so, yeah I, so i think they're probably just trying to work out how to deal with that but i i have no idea <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, i've been tempted just to buy it because I, I really want to play dark souls i mm. played demon Souls when it first came out on the playstation 3 and i really want to play dark souls so i've never played it and i'm like oh, do i just buy it on the pc or do i wait and buy it on the switch and because I've got a Switch channel, I'm like, oh, if I buy it on the Switch, then I get to play it on the channel. I'd play it in the channel. Oh, but then... I'd love to watch you play it, but the only problem with that is 
I realised with Dark when I did Dark Souls three because I got a, uh, let's play with Dark Souls three. Sorry to interrupt you, Steve. Oh no, um, no, go ahead. It got to the point where you're going to keep fighting the same things because you're going to keep dying at a certain point. And yeah. I was like, mm, I'm still stuck, half stuck in the same area, building up one of my characters. And I was like, this is going to get boring to watch because it'd be the same. Yeah. So, and it wouldn't feel like a real let's play unless I'm putting in what's been going on. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's hard to juggle between like, showing everything and then also kind of showing like I, enough so people know that you've been grinding or they know that you've kind of had to go and buy a load of potions or something or like that kind of thing or like they've seen that you die but you don't want to have a video of you like dying for like 30 minutes on yeah. the same thing because it's they're just gonna, people are just gonna be watching you going i'm angry this is annoying so you've got to like edit it out but also you don't want to edit out too much where people are just like oh my god this guy's amazing at playing computer games he never dies it's like well i did i just edited it out because i don't want 20 minutes of you watching me get pissed off where monster Hunter can be infuriating sometimes it, it's never i've never had a rage quit with it um but i i spend a lot of time just grinding so i build up my research level and stuff like that. dark souls on the other hand because there's been moments where I've had a weak enemy hit me and then another weak enemy hit me in another angle, but because of the way it's timing, I can't get out. I'm going to die. Oh, you're getting like in a hit loop. Or yeah. And that's not uncommon. It, I'm not saying it's common, but it's not uncommon for it to happen. And it was like, no. Was, there, were, there were times even my Let's Plays, I ended my, uh, my Let's Play at that moment because I was too frustrated. Hmm and to try yeah, I, I think if i i would have to like do a lot of uh in between filming grinding on that game i think yeah to, and then just have to explain like i've done like four hours of grinding which is why i'm now gonna upgrade my character to like x or y yeah so I, um, I still don't know yeah. how the upgrades work properly in dark souls it was though i've played it for i don't know how, how many hours i was just like uh is this made a big difference i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> um but again, saying what you're saying about the grinding thing, I, I've done that with Monster Hunter. So if I've, I'm only really doing missions, so I'm not doing my explorations. I'm not doing my investigation missions and stuff like that. So sometimes I'll be in a video and I'll be like, oh, hello, yes. Hello, everyone, yes. Now I've got this lovely new piece of gear. And <laughs> so, yeah, it was just sort of like that. Hopefully that wasn't too high-pitched voice for you. No, no, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> because I like my character being like a, an old English fop. Yeah, like the oh, you've hunter. Na you've nailed that. Yeah, the old, the old, the old hunter. You know, with, with his gun and stuff like that. That is the state and so on. Oh, what was the uh, what was the third game? Oh, you, uh, you third said, game. You said two <laughs> games. <laughs> oh, it's Zelda. It is just Zelda because I I can't play Zelda or anything else, and I would love oh, to play the uh, Zelda game. It's amazing. Um, I would love because again, everyone I know who I think may have similar taste to me, not maybe the same taste, but similar taste, like yourself. I think. It so gone. it's yeah no it's it's amazing there's only two things that i need to there's like it's amazing but but these are like the tiniest buts um is it the weapons break no no that's, you get used to it so it's it's fine and okay. then like later in the game you get like enough good weapons that it's kind of more like you then find more good weapons and you're like oh, i don't want to throw these other good weapons away <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like, well, I don't, I don't want to leave this like sitting on the floor because it's a good weapon, but you've got like eight of them. So <laughs> that's like um, me. It's kind of like me with Monster Hunter because the the weapons build up in my in the tree. There's loads of different um, element types, or do slight differences, or something does better at cutting off something. And so I've got all these weapons that I can upgrade, but I've got every, almost every single one that's down this tree. Yeah, you don't want to. You just want to put it in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, no, oh no so yeah there's uh, the first few hours you're stuck on like the great plateau okay um so at first it feels like a bit like boxed in mm. but once you get once you've done about you do like four shrines or something like that then you get off the you get off out of that area oh fair enough and then, at, and then at, at that point the game like really opens up and it's just like go wherever you want do like you could then at that point just go and do the end boss if you wanted i mean it'd be really really hard but you could like people have done it oh fair enough um so it, there's 
there's that and um i totally forgot what the other point <laughs> the other point was okay um so how have you because i know you play skyrim oh yeah i love skyrim i haven't seen you do any live streams of it for a while though or have you and i've just no blind. i just haven't had a chance um so i like i, I really like like uh, skyrim but so, i like i like yeah i like streaming it just because i don't want to have to do videos of that because people have seen Hundreds, of, hundreds of hundreds yeah. yeah so you know sometimes people just fancy watching like a live stream of it and then i'm there if you want to do that and also it's nice because when you do a live stream you usually like play for like three or four hours and skyrim's one of those games that when you start playing you want to play for like three or four hours did you watch bethesda's um thing at e3 this year uh i saw the new fallout game fallout 76 the multiplayer one see i'm i'm a fallout fan but i was like eh about that to be honest i don't know if it, that looks quite fun but like, you said that you're not really into like uh like online if, stuff so. if i if if i let's say let's say you got it for the pc i'm only just saying if you got it for the pc if i know you've got it i know three or four of my other friends have got it then maybe i would be going okay guys let's all go in together blah 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 but i just know someone would backstab someone and i'd be like oh great now it's gonna be a rift in the group <laughs> yeah <I think> <laughs> It's definitely a game for like playing with a group of friends. I don't think it would be yeah. like so much fun playing it like single. single I wouldn't. Player, but... I wouldn't. I, I, I suppose you could because you know they're saying all the humans are are going to be human players. There's going to be no NPCs, humans yeah, yeah. in that game. Um. So the tr if some so it will be a player will be your trader, who's not a robot basically because you can become a trader in it. Do you know the bit that got me happy in the Bethesda? Uh, it wasn't that. The, the one bit that got me really, really happy. They announced the next uh, Elder Scrolls? They, they just said, just to let you guys know, we're still working on it. And then they had a little trailer bit. And yeah. No date, no when it's coming. And I was there going, yes, Elder Scrolls 6 is coming. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be like 2020, but it's cool that, you know, it's coming. Yeah, probably more like 2021. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's going to come out till probably 2021 because they're saying um, there's a lot of things they want to do in the game that they can't do. And that makes me very intrigued. What is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be like a, almost like a living world. Yeah. I mean, it's, it seems like a fairly living world now. Yeah. I guess Max, since then, like you said um, earlier, we kind of got a bit off topic that like Witcher 3 was like your favourite. Yeah. Like one of your favourite games and that game really felt like a living world as well so Sorry. they've kind of they've got to take it a notch past that yeah what? which is going to be quite difficult i imagine but it was very thing is though witcher 3 it is a good game it's a brilliant brilliant game but if you're someone easily offended do not get that game do there's definitely a lot of not get sexy that game. time in that game <laughs> and yeah but if you the way the humans talk to the elves and dwarfs and the hobbits oh sometimes. yeah it's definitely um yeah like fantasy racism i guess yeah would be the, uh, it's the way to talk about it yeah and also the um the baron's quest i'll just leave it there oh god yeah that's a horrible quest that that, one. that ends pretty gruesome yeah um, but yeah no there's I, multiple I endings actually... though there's multiple endings to that one oh is there yeah. i my what my ending to that quest was pretty grim so did he hang himself yeah, then you fight the uh, like uh, gross thing. I, I I had a different ending. I'm not going to tell you what that was. But yeah, I, I did actually pick it up on. I saw it in, on sale. I think it was Good Old Games had it or something like that, yeah. and I picked it up for maybe like fifteen pounds with all the DLC. I I so I had it on Good Good, um, good Old Games, right? And but at the time I was like, uh, and then Steam had this massive sale for it. And it was seven pounds for everything. Oh wow! Yeah, and I was like, I'm having that because it's yep. cheaper than buying the DLC individually. And the funny thing okay. was, the save files from good old games and PC are together. Oh, nice. So yeah, oh, pretty so, pretty good. Yeah, at the time, yeah. Um, it, it's one of those games I want to start playing, but it's kind of like, do you have time? You have to be. It's a game you have to be good at as well. Yeah, like. So it's kind of hard to be good at it without putting in a lot of time mm. 
and then but it's like well then i've got to record for the channel and that takes a lot of time and then editing yeah. takes a lot of time yeah <laughs> like i really want to play it but it's just yeah it's just time again i'm gonna ask you a question you were talking about zelda starting area um being oh, yep, yep. this sort of like being boxed in did you feel like in the witcher though in that first beginning area did you feel like you're being boxed in i didn't no i felt pretty open yeah and then when it, you you got the open world bit i was like it's this big really? yeah that, that game <laughs> was pretty pretty big and then you walk somewhere and get murdered by something before you knew what's going on yeah that's that's a little <laughs> bit what like zelda's like <laughs> as well oh, um, cool. but yeah the, zelda is is amazing like you spend a lot of time in that game just being like i'm gonna climb this mountain and see what's at the top of the mountain mm. And then you climb up there and you're like, oh, wow, there's something cool. Like, they actually put stuff at the top of these mountains or, like, something fun or interesting. And oh, cool. it's just such, so, like, a lot of people, we just see random YouTube videos of people just working out stuff in the game. Yeah. So, like, you can, like, stop time and oh. then say, like, if you had, you can cut, say, what people were doing, like, cutting down trees. And then you can say, like, stop time on this tree. And then if you hit it loads, it builds up momentum. So when the time starts again, it shoots off like a rocket. Oh, wow. So what people would do would do that and then jump on the tree. Mm. And then it would, like, shoot off like a cliff or something like that. And then they'd use that to, like, traverse the landscape really fast by, like, making tree rockets and then, like, <laughs> riding them. And, like, mad stuff like that. It's just ridiculous, but kind of, like, hilarious just that people worked out that you could do it. And, and again, it's 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 amazing when people do that. Um, ah, next question I'm going to ask you: What was probably the hardest game you've played? Um, on the channel, or all right, let's say the channel. What's been the hardest game for you to play? I think Floor Kids, maybe because is that the breakdance one? Yeah, because at the time. I was recording like three different series at once. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, that, that when I was doing five, that was a nightmare. Yeah. So what I should have done was like just record a whole bunch of videos for one game and then a whole bunch mm. for another. But I wasn't, so I was kind of playing like just a little bit at a time. Yeah. So I never got, I never skilled myself up enough. So when it got into later levels, I got uh, quite a bit stuck. And then I kind of had to like just stop recording for a while and get actually good at the game mm. and, and then continue recording. Um, so maybe that just because I wasn't playing the game regularly enough. So if it was actually quite, there's a few videos where I kind of like just suck a bit. Okay. But so yeah, I think there's also one Doom video <laughs> where I get incredibly lost for like a long time. Yes, I do remember that when I watched it. I and do then, remember that. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, and then after that, I don't think I actually made a Doom video for quite a while because I was so, like, angry at the game. But then when I went back into it, I was like, oh, I love this game. Why did I stop? But well, that's um, what happens sometimes. It's um, It happened with me with Monster, you know, on the 3DS. Sometimes I'd have to put them down because I would be at that point where I'm like, okay. Because there was some monsters I was fighting um, till I found out about the websites and the, what their main weaknesses were and stuff like that. Um, you got 50 minutes. You're fighting this thing for 50 minutes it's limping it's ready to die and then the 15 minutes run out uh and i'm like i've just spent almost an hour what yeah that's a long time to be yeah fail failing that's the... been... sorry go on. no go ahead i saw that's on the 3ds i haven't found that with the pc version yet uh i oh, might okay. do later because i haven't gone up against tempered uh, beasts yet which is like the higher end sort of thing so i've only uh. I've just got to high rank recently. I'm having a uh, that problem a little bit with uh, Dead Cells. Um, so have you have you seen that game at all? Dead Cells, Dead Cells, Dead Cells. It rings a bell. It's like a 2D uh, roguelite. And I think, I think I have seen it actually. Yes. So you, you play if you get I've played it like quite a few like run throughs and you get to like towards the end of the mm. game and it's like 50 minutes in. Oh, and then cool. the, the last time I got to it, maybe it was just over an hour, and I got to the last boss, and I was like, oh, wow, I got to the last boss. And then he absolutely destroyed me, like, in an instant. And I was like, oh, my God, that was over an hour, and now I've got to start from the beginning again. 
and I haven't, I haven't actually picked it up since because I was just like I had that kind of slight rage moment where I was not like super angry but I was just like more disheartened and was like I just need to leave this game for a week or so and then when I come back to it I'll be ready to to tackle it again but oh my lord like after yeah you spend an hour on something and then if it was like if I kind of played him and had a chance and was like oh then i messed up but he just absolutely battered me so much that i was kind of like oh crap <laughs> for me i think talking about pc going to a pc game for a minute there was a strategy warfare game a planetary exploration sort of thing and um, you you start i start off as earth and i'd go out and and i had this massive not a massive empire but i've gone, gone up against an alien race that had quite a large empire and I was, but I didn't have a massive fleet. He had a bigger fleet, but my ships were more advanced. And for about a year of in with it, a year quality of time in the game, not actually playing game, but in the game, I'm almost taking his empire away. Yeah, yeah. But I only, but the problem was I didn't do any research into any other weaponry. I was just missiles. And then all of a sudden he's coming out with these ships, and he kept these ships behind these smaller ships. And I'm like, what's he doing that for? And all of a sudden. They had these anti... He had anti-missile technology. <laughs> I couldn't fight him. I actually couldn't fight him. And by the time I eventually started getting lasers that could take him on, I, I lost everything I gained and three quarters of my empire. Oh, wow. And his fleet suddenly was massive. <laughs> it's like game over. It was game over at that point. I think that's Sto uh, Stellaris. I can't remember. I can't, Stella, uh, St I can't pronounce it. But yeah, it I'll sounds just... like like when you used to play XCOM, like the the older <laughs> XComs. So oh, they were brilliant. You'd do something wrong, and then all of a sudden it would just go like you'd lose a few critical people, and then the game would just come tumbling down. Yeah, and then you like got no money, and like America's not giving you funding anymore. You're just like, oh my god! And then it's just like do you, know you realize you haven't saved, you haven't done a rolling save. So then you have to start the whole game after like thirty hours. And you're like, oh, oh my god! Like I've done that a few times on XCOM, or like. The original one from the 90s had just been like which one did you play which was your first uh, one so the first one that came out on the playstation so that was like ufo that was your enemy. Uh, it was called it, it, it was called XCOM on the playstation but on the amiga and pc it was ufo enemy and yeah i played terror from the deep which was second but that was I my played, first XCOM. that I was played my first one apocalypse but i couldn't complete that i completed I'm... the first two and then the reboot, I played XCOM and completed that and loved it. But I haven't played the second one yet. I really want to. It's just, I know it's like a 60-hour game. And it's having 60 hours to play XCOM, which I would love to have, but I just you don't. You don't. You don't. It's, yeah. uh, talk about XCOM. My, my very first one was Terrors of Deep. That was actually the first it's, one I bought. I mean, it's pretty much the same as the first one. But yeah. I'm fine with that because I love the first one. So I completed terrors of the deep but when i completed it it was only because uh you know you have to get so many uh, people and interrogate them eventually you learn the information where their secret base is yeah and i was interrogating 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 so people and eventually it just happened and i was like oh my god send everyone in um but i you know saved it of course um and i, I think eventually i completed it because i had a guy who had like two tasers or a taser and he just wasn't dying they kept missing him, and even the you know them brain bug things. I hated them. Oh, what? I yeah, they gone. So they turned you to zom zombies. Zombies, and then you kill, and you, then when you die as a zombie, they burst out as another brain, creating yeah. your tentacles. I hated them with a passion. It was not even. Yeah, that was yeah. horrid. They had a uh, chrysalids in the first one. They were pretty nasty. They would turn you into zombies, and then they would. But when you killed them, they burst out, or after a while, they burst out and be another chrysalid. And it was just like they could just take out your. Game. you're like no that's in the new ones as well there's a creature that does that as well in the new one isn't there oh, oh i can't oh, i can't remember it's the right i just have I just remember the pain yeah <laughs> the, you... like the deep emotional pain from the first game because you you're slowly making your way along the corridor when you know there's one hidden around the corner and you're like just come out and let me do my auto shot at you you yeah <laughs> and they don't until they cut oh, all they do and then you miss every shot and then oh. they get you like no, that was like Travis, and I've been building him up for like missions and missions, and he finally got really good, but you just killed him. 
And now I've got to shoot him. <laughs> oh, so name one of them, me. And I, and if he died, I, I actually restarted. Oh, uh, yeah, that's never named them. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't do that now. I don't do that now. It's, it's yeah. too much emotional attachment. <laughs> um, yeah, so the XCOM games were kind of cool for me. Uh, I never got into Apocalypse, though. Yeah, P Apocalypse wasn't as good, I don't think. It was like based in just one city, and I, like, I, I enjoyed playing it but i just maybe i just wasn't good at that game mm. like oh i didn't stick with it long enough to to progress but yeah i i wasn't i all the corporations would like leave and yeah i, I just didn't like it as much as the others because it wasn't like modern day it was like a bit too future yeah i it was i didn't enjoy i just didn't understand how a lot of it worked either for me at, yeah, the, time. It was, at the time yeah it was yeah it was definitely a lot harder i think than mm. the others oh so just out of curiosity, what do your viewers, ha or, and even mine who may come over to your channel, have to look forward to next? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, after Blossom Tales, I do have a very short series filmed of a game called Battle Supremacy, which is like a tank game. I've heard of it, actually. And there's only, there's, I think, four or five episodes of that. It's quite a short series. Okay. And then I'm trying to actually decide what I want to play next. Um, mm -hmm. I've been trying to alternate between like lighter games like Blossom Tales and darker games like uh, Wolfenstein and Doom. Oh, I want to say one tip for people. If you're watching the Wolfenstein, turn down your volume or wear down or wear earplugs. There's certain things said in that game that... Yeah, yeah. that game has a lot of uh, social commentary and... yeah. It's definitely very adult, yeah, and I, yeah, not not safe for work. Yeah, <laughs> um, which I almost found out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You sent me a little message. I was like, mm. "Oops, sorry." Because I, like, um, I should have realised because I played the first one. There was a lot of things said in the first one that wasn't um, politically incorrect. Politically correct. Yeah, you're definitely fighting Nazis, so there's yeah. definitely race comes up a lot in that game. Yes. And kind of like other isms um, mm. come up in that game quite a bit. So, yeah. Whereas Golf Story and Blossom Tales are a lot lighter. And, yes. Um, Golf Story was really fun. It was really, really definitely fun. Definitely work safe. Yeah. That was just, yes. Yeah, watch. Definitely watch Golf Story, guys. It's really worth... Um, really, it's good. Good. And again, you, you'll see... If you watch it all the way through, you'll see how Steve's changed... So I think because you change your mic at one point as well, don't you? You get a better mic. Oh yeah, I've got this mic now. Um, yeah. So my audio setup, like I think after about eight episodes, kind of changes and yep. gets like a bit better. And then I think then, like the twelfth, you change to your having your face in it. Or... Yeah, which actually I found I thought having a camera would make me feel more awkward, mm. but actually it actually made me more confident. Which seems weird, but I think it's because when you're not on camera and you can say things, and then sometimes because people can't see your face, they don't know in what context you're saying that. Like, yeah. like is he being sarcastic, or does he mean that, or mm. like, or maybe you are, you do mean something, but they might take it like you're being sarcastic. But if you're got a camera, you can kind of look at the camera and give it a little like a little look and then people were like oh he was joking when he said that or like yeah you know like so i kind of treat the camera a lot more like i'm talking to someone and it just makes it easier whereas before you're just kind of sitting in a room talking to yourself playing a computer game <laughs> which know? feels very weird for a long time but the camera made it more normal which seems weird but it somehow did uh, well, for me anyway yeah I, before i started doing any of my let's play videos like um oh god uh, this war of mine was one of them uh, warhammer quest total war those are some of my early ones and before i started playing them i was actually when i started playing my computer games i started talking to myself to try not to make myself sound mad but to try and make myself more comfortable talking whilst playing and get used to doing it and in some of my early even videos, I actually stop playing whilst talking because I'm not realising that. Yeah, and Darkest Dungeon as well. I remember doing that uh, as well. Yeah, it definitely gets quite. It's quite difficult at sometimes. Like mm. I think on some videos, if I'm kind of struggling 
with the game at certain points I do get tend to get a little bit quieter because I'm just really concentrating on like doing the thing in the game. Yeah, I I, I call that um concentration mode. In my but videos. yeah, like yeah, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you're just like I just need to just do this thing because otherwise I'm gonna be it's gonna be like a 20 minute video of me doing the same thing over and over again. So you're just like okay, like 15 seconds of like pure concentration. Yeah. Um, but for I me, think it's also, 30 seconds sometimes. That's what I, I yeah. think with with the with the video as well, like mm. people can see, like they they can see your face, and you're like okay, he's like like trying to focus on this thing so i think it helps with those oh cool those kind of moments or if you if you fail or like die in like a comedy way yeah it's nice to just kind of give the camera a look like you don't have to be like oh i died and i'm such an idiot you just look at the camera in like a kind of like yes i know i'm an idiot kind of way mm. and it just i think it just makes you maybe more relatable and just I don't know, it just makes it easier to watch. Like, I think, yeah, I think it's just... E like, I like it whenever Let's Players do that kind of thing. Like, you don't have to be talking all the time. You can yeah. kind of just, like, give the camera a little nod or, like, a, a cheeky wink and, like, people get it. Okay, cool. Because sometimes I actually... I, I've, I've been known to go quiet. Another thing I've I've had to watch out for um, when I, I when I edit my um, videos, I and mean, it's one of the reasons why... I'm, one of, I'm happy one of my friends taught me this because I didn't even know how to do it. You get your own voice on a different line. Uh, oh yeah yeah because and i don't mean for swearing guys for me sometimes when i'm concentrating i go hmm oh yes you can just like delete, delete, out. <laughs> delete <Yeah>. that out <laughs> i'd be so annoyed watching someone and then this is a noise and you're like is it fucking my speaker oh i swore <laughs> <laughs> there you go you can because you, you got it on a different track you can get rid of it yeah well i've got to learn how to bleep as well Oh yeah, I've started to, I, I've started to in like the later videos, mm. things like Blossom Tech, like with, with Wolfenstein, I swear, yeah, because that game's like an eighteen game and yeah. it, like, some of the themes in that game and some of the things that happen in the game, swearing is like not the worst thing. No, no, not. But at whereas all. like Blossom Tales, even though you are like a young woman chopping up lots and lots of people, <laughs> if you think about it that way, um, so she's a sociopath. <laughs> She's definitely a psycho. Um, like yeah, like like later on, like like yeah, that that game it's really like quite a light hearted game. Mm. So uh, if you're dropping f bombs all over that, it would be kind of weird. So I'm trying to really not swear in in those games, just because like you know I do kind of want to reach like a wider audience, yeah. and it it does seem out of place. Whereas like all the characters in in Wolfenstein are like saying things like a lot worse than yeah. I would be saying kind of thing so it's not it's not so bad so like sorry go on no go, go ahead so is there a Switch game you're playing but you're not recording yeah there's a few actually so I've been playing Banner Saga yeah that's which... I've got that on my PC I haven't actually finished it yet um it's just oh, it's... it just got so far behind on on because I, I want to play other games and because I haven't got so much time I, I actually I've just put that in back burner. I, I play that a lot at lunchtime uh, at work. Oh, because you got it on your Switch, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually I've also got that on my PC as well, only because because um, I'm an Amazon Prime member. Oh, okay. Um, Twi it was on Twitch for free. Like if you're a prime member, so I just oh. happen to have one and two. Maybe I should join my... Twitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just I just happen to have that just because. Um, but yeah, no. So I'm, I played one. I finished one recently, and I'm playing through the second, and I'm I'm really loving those games. Um, Dead Cells. I've been playing on and off mm. for a little bit. Um, yeah, and that that's that's kind of it. I play a little bit of Fortnite or warframe oh not not on the switch sorry on the pc uh like now and then just if i want to you know just like shoot things oh cool and just like have have a little bit of time where i'm like i don't have to think like fortnite's nice when i just want to i don't want to think i just want to shoot people and just like play a game for 15 minutes so then like when it's done just turn it off and but go and do something else can I ask you about Fortnite for a minute? Because there was meant that was meant to co-cross all all consoles, PCs, and everything, wasn't it? The original plan for that. 
it was yeah, meant yeah. to have cross-platform and it was sony that stopped it wasn't it oh well you can play against you can play cross-platform with everything other than pc i'm uh, sorry other than playstation all right so pc so if i was on the pc we we i'm I pretty sure up... yeah we, we we could play together okay, if yeah. we if you said i think you have to turn the option on oh okay so by default you'd be playing against other pc people and i'll be playing against switch people but you can there's an option it's the same with rocket league as well so you can play against people on pc and xbox if you i don't like, understand why playstation the switch is that's just sony being sony yeah uh, because for me it just sounds like oh you're you're because five of your friends are on playstation we want you to buy a playstation sort of thing. i mean they're the biggest selling console right now they so are, yeah. they can just do what they want i think if it was like microsoft like xbox was the biggest then maybe they'll be like nope we're take we're keeping our ball and yeah. then sony would probably be like yeah we're happy to play nice with the switch i think mm. it's just you know if you're the biggest selling console you can kind of do what you want oh, fair enough okay guys so i think because we've been chatting for a bit of time now um age of boredom slash steve i think it's time that i call this quits because i'm hungry i haven't eaten yet i know you have <laughs> I, had a, I had a nice uh, hot cross bun oh. it's not the right time of year for hot cross buns but i enjoyed it all the same well i'm not a big fan of hot cross buns to be honest I don't heresy know what... i'm not a fan of raisins I'm actually not a fan of raisins. I love grapes, but I don't like raisins. That's fair enough. <laughs> um, so, so if people want to find you again, how do they find you again? So I'm Age of Boredom on Twitter and also on YouTube. So if you go to youtube.com slash Age of Boredom, it all in one word, then you'll be able to find the channel. Um, subscriptions are always gratefully received. Uh, like leave a comment <laughs> on the videos and i always get back to people and it's always just really nice just to, to chat with people in the comments like i i guess it's the same for you whenever you get a, a like a nice comment I was about to say it nice always comments, kind of, yeah it always <laughs> ma it, ma it makes your day like so much better right like oh, even does. just just someone saying oh, i watched the video and i liked it mm. or even like oh i like that thing you did at three minutes 50 or something yeah You're like oh wow someone watched three minutes 50 of my video like it, it just makes your day like it's, it's just someone saying that shouldn't make you feel as happy as it actually makes you it's kind of like a strange thing you're like for the rest of your day you're like oh my god i'm walking on like air no, no like it, you, you, you it are really, right. or like if you like release the video on monday and then you like check how it's doing and you're like oh it's got like 10 likes you're like oh my god that's amazing like how did 10 people like this video like well, sometimes for me like, just just very quick with this one sorry for me sometimes it's because i suffer from dyslexia sometimes i don't read things right or something like that or, I, or especially when i'm tired and there's one or two people that say to me oh you know i'm really happy you, you're doing this you know i like what you're doing with your channel and your reading's been getting better i've been saying it but then i also get the people who like there's someone the other day to be honest just went oh dear god please read properly so you know at the end of the day there's there's two things that can happen yeah yeah i mean you can't change you yeah. so like just i uh, don't don't worry about it like, yeah i don't i just ignore them it's the best thing to yeah do now. just ignore them <laughs> i just like to say oh thanks for your feedback i will try to do better but no promises oh no don't if, if someone <laughs> does critical comments where they say okay this i didn't like or because i'm i'm not gonna uh, anyway we're, uh, we need to say goodbye because of how long we've been doing this <laughs> we could go on for hours otherwise here yeah um, no, we, we really would <laughs> okay guys so if you've liked this video please click like guys and you know go check out age of boredom's um, channel also go check out his twitter as well you can also find me on twitter i am light of hand um but i'm not actually light of hand i'm light of hand um yt if i remember rightly because no i am light of hand it's just my at light hand yt because someone else beat me to that <laughs> also leave a comment tell me what you guys think if you agree with some of the things we've said do you disagree with some of the things we said if you do please let us know down at the bottom don't just say no i think everything you said is awful give us a nice little feedback of why you don't agree with everything we said also guys subscriptions are lovely especially considering i'm only seven away at this minute from 500 <laughs> Uh, please yeah you, you really please. want to meet that get to that 500 <laughs> that will make your day that oh it really would it really would 
All right, Steve, thank you for being on here, mate. Nice. No problem. All right, see you later, mate. Bye. All right, cheers. Bye.